Good evening and welcome to the X-Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City where courageous people share their journey from the religion of Mormonism to a personal saving relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm your host Bishop Earl and I thank God for this opportunity. I'm grateful for the many volunteers who make this possible. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint for over 60 years. I have a great love for the LDS people but I know that there are people who question the church, faithful Latter-day Saints who are questioning and even leaving the church. Uh, again, as I've said, it's sometimes over doctrine, sometimes it's church, hi church history that comes along that kind of makes them think. Sometimes it's because they can't keep the commandments and so they feel guilty and feel uh, ashamed actually and they don't fit in. Others just don't feel like they can ever do enough or be good enough. I hope that the story that you hear tonight and that you hear on the X-Files will touch your heart in some way to realize that we, we shouldn't be relying on ourselves. We rely on Jesus to, uh, to save us. Anyway, we appreciate our guest tonight, uh, Parker Hinckley. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. And, Thank you. And uh, fine young man, and he's uh, a former Latter-day Saint. And so tell us a little bit about your history as a, as a Latter-day Saint. Well, uh come from a, a long line of generational Mormons. Um, now, I guess to ask you, Hinckley, yeah. are you related yes. um, uh, to, to he, I believe he is, um, yes, I'm related to him. I'm, I think, a second cousin once removed. Okay. It's not a bloodline, but that's my dad's side, so we got the Hinckley side. Right. And then um, my mother's side, uh, we're all uh, descendants of Brigham Young. Oh. And he's actually my, my fourth great uh, great grandfather. Okay. Well, I'm so, sure anyone listening and mm -hmm. hearing the name Parker Hinckley would wonder if what your association yeah. was there. So you were born in the church, though, and yes. your parents were uh, active in the church. They were, were they? active. They were active. My um, uh, my father Steve um, and my mother Carolyn. You know, they 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 raised me in the church and okay. and, and taught me the doctrine and. And encouraged me to go to uh, to church and and stay active with, you know, mutual and and, and all this, Cub, Cub Scouts. I, I did it all. <laughs> Scouts, um, Cub Scouts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were, were you a deacon and teacher? I, I was a deacon and teacher. Yeah, priest. Uh, uh, priest. Okay. I, I um. And so. Uh, in in my teenage years, um. Well, let me just back up here. Um, apart from my, my my church life, I had been you know teased a lot in school and and and, and things like that. So um, I had you know tried to go my own way, and and uh, what did I say here? You just feel in a, yeah. You felt kind of alone. I mean, did you fit in with the yeah. kids at church? I fit in with with the kids at church. I've, but not so much at not, school. Well, huh? not so much at school, um, and I, I've never really had like a whole lot of friends. Mm. I've only had a couple of friends that I would uh, stick close to. Yeah, it's always kind of been that way, and you know, you as, as time went on, they, just your personality probably. It is. I guess, it or? is. And um, and so, as they kind of went in inactive, I went inactive. Oh, I mean, it was the few friends that you did. It wasn't just you, you know them that, that made me in, inactive it was it was uh the world mm. you know it was sucking at me it was <laughs> it was drawing me out and um i found acceptance in high school in a in a more popular crowd oh and um that led down the road to partying lifestyle and i had never felt more accepted in 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 my life i thought this is this is life this so is you, what to live for you looked for that and you enjoyed yeah. that association mm -hmm. and the and the feel good aspects of that exactly now your parents uh divorced while you, when you were 14 yeah is that true and that's that probably true. had an impact on you as well that's well, pretty yeah. traumatic and well you, you know how they they think you know if there's not a priesthood in leader that. in the family i mean yeah. things can go kind of hay haywire yeah. um so raised but by a single mom. Single mom. Now you Most had a. Did yeah. you have a testimony of the of the church at least growing up? Yes. As far as Joseph yes. Smith and. Yeah. Um, Book of Mormon. He, yeah, the, the the Book of Mormon. The jo Joseph Smith. He, to me, I mean that's that that story of the first vision. That's all I I knew, 
and is a very compelling, very moving, emotional story. Yeah. And I, I, if you haven't heard anything else, I don't see why you wouldn't believe it. It's, <laughs> but so, um, and the same with uh, the Book of Mormon. I guess you had it, read that or read in it. Or? Yes, I've, I've read in it. Did you take seminary? I took seminary okay. in, in junior high. Yeah. And um, I, I remember a lot of questions arising up in that time of my life as we were going through the scriptures more and doing the scripture mastery. What kind of questions? I mean, doctrinal well, kinds of yeah, questions? Yeah, like, like I remember we were talking about uh, how many planets there were or endless amount of planets and God has other worlds and we were the most wicked world. That's why... That's why we crucified our own God and all this. And it was, it really made me think, well, wow, are we, are we that bad? <laughs> and everyone else is just so good or what, what are they? But I mean, I guess from that point, I started uh, asking more questions, but it just kind of got, those doubts kind of were put on the shelf and, yeah. and left, left to sit. And, yeah. But, um... It was more in, into my adult life when I got more serious about the, the church and I was more convicted. Yeah. And um, that happened when, in 2007, uh, my sister Kirsten Hinckley um, and my mother Carolyn Tuft uh, were shot in, um, uh, excuse me, um, they were shot at Trolley Square. Uh, in, in February 2007. Oh, they were involved in that uh, yeah. tragic shooting at Trolley Square. Um, so from that point on, that must I, I wasn't living a life I wanted, I should be living at that point. I was still kind of lingering around with that lifestyle I had in high school. With a group that made yeah. you feel accepted, but, uh, and, you, so, and you felt guilty, I guess, over that. and. Well, yeah. Over the activities. And I remember, and I, and this stems from the belief that you know our family members can see us or, yeah, or, or believe in us. Or, okay, <laughs> but I thought that she was looking at me, and she was telling me, your sister. Yeah, my my sister. Yes. Now your mother was shot, but she is she okay now? Um, I'm sorry. Were they both? Yeah, my mom was shot. She she survived. She, she was shot. survived, and she's okay now. Yeah, she okay. lives with lead poisoning, actually. Oh, and okay. But it was your sister, and you felt like she might be looking exactly on you and your lifestyle. And and so what happened from that point? I felt that you know what am I doing? I'm disappointing my sister. I know she would not want me to do these things. Yeah. And I felt terrible. So I I felt this desire, like I had in the past, to come back. The LDS to the church. LDS church. I've been in and out, and every time I've come back, it's always been with such vig vigor and, and so zealous, and I, and I loved it. And the same thing would always happen. The rules, the legalism, it felt so stifling. Really? And uh, it didn't feel free, but again, that was also explained away. And yeah. You know, the that was need part for of it. the culture, part yeah. of what you, you knew what to expect at this mm -hmm. point. So were you able to do that? I mean, you did make an effort to try to yeah. even go on a mission yes. at, at, at that point, didn't I you? I went to um, the bishop of, of my ward and I asked him, you know, what do I need to be worthy to go to the temple and go on a mission? Wow. And at the time I was 24 and uh, I was dealing with personal sin and, and the life of... I, I'm trying to leave behind, and he had to put me on some probationary state mm -hmm. um, di uh, discipline, but we were working towards it. But he also told me that I don't have a whole lot of time because the, the cutoff for a missionary is 25. Okay. So I, I was, I couldn't figure out why anyone would, you know, be forced to stop at a certain age. But, you know, if they were so <laughs> zealous and they wanted to teach the word, but. You were 24 and a half, you could go, yeah. 25 and a yeah. month or so, you couldn't go, okay. Yeah. So, that, was that disappointing then? Well, it was, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And, um, but I tried my best and it just, I couldn't live up to it. I fell short yeah. and, uh, 
down I went again. Oh no. But this time it went even further. I, my mother was prescribed pain medication, which I had dabbled with in the past, you know, mm. that colorful lifestyle I had. And I got addicted to painkillers. And I got caught and I lost trust with my mother. Oh boy. And then it eventually wound down to heroin. Mm. And I'll tell you that is, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It is the worst bondage I've ever experienced in my life. Wow. And it just suppresses your emotions. It deadens you to all emotion. Did you know that going into that? Did you, were you aware enough or seen others go through some of those experiences uh, with heroin? And I haven't seen other people. I, I, so it was no. kind of new to you and, and you really didn't know about it until you no. got into it? No. I've yeah. heard it was ter you know, r yeah. really, Addictive. really bad. Addictive. And yeah. I was actually yeah. deceived at that. The first time I had it, I was told it was something else, but oh boy, it got me. And I was eventually shooting it into my veins, and that that just makes you spiral around so hard. Wow. And I was I was a dead man walking. I was 160 pounds, mm. and well, Parker, do you think part of this was some of the pain and of losing your sister? Well, definitely. And your going through that. I mean, you were trying to deal with it to, oh, absolutely. in ways maybe that you didn't really understand, but that's how you were dealing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, a very huge factor for why I went that route. Yeah. And, um, and this leads up to eventually where I'm c coming to is how I came to Christ. Okay. Um, you know, I... I remember when I, the last day in Salt Lake City, um, I, my, my family was re researching some ways to, to get me some help. And all the secular help costs money, um, and they treated you like a, like a, a customer. You know, they were like <laughs> catering to you. So um, I couldn't afford it. It was thousands of dollars. And then I found Teen Challenge. Uh, one, one of my friends that I would run amok with doing drugs came back a year later i i couldn't figure out where he was but he came back a changed person within, i didn't within the year huh? within the year i i had no idea who he was i knew he was micah but <laughs> who, who, who where did you what but, did you do with the real micah or the original exactly exactly so he, what is teen challenge old teen, well, teen challenge is is a uh, christian discipleship program but it it helps people come out of the bondage of, of addiction. Okay. And um, in Southern California, that's that's where I, I was at. They, um, so they, you went there? I went there for uh, a, a year and a half. I did an internship there where I served and gave back. And it changed my life. Wow. It, Christ is there. We, it's a 20, it's like $20,000 to get to go through what we had to do. And it, I had to pay none of it. Christ brought me out of it and used the very depths of hell to bring me out and and out of the bondage of religion. Yeah. I mean... Did you kind of get to a point in your life where you just said, I can't do this anymore. I'm just, I need help. I'm, I'm totally yeah. broken. Oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was stealing from my mother oh. and... Uh, like I said, that last day was um, when I, I stole, what was it? I told, I told my mother I, I was going to pay off a debt, and I took some of her money. Didn't bring back a receipt, and she just came home, threw the radio box at me, and said, you're getting a ticket and going to California. This is, it. This is done. To Teen Challenge, yeah. was it? And well, so, so tell us about your, were you there a year as well? I was, is it about that long of a program? Yeah, it's it's a year long program, and, and then four months longer oh, for a for an internship. It's kind of like to, a, a, a way to give back. It's to help. It's hmm. to create a more mature Christian. Okay. And uh, develop. And you met an interesting individual there. I yes. I remember you telling yes. me. Um, it is no. It's by no coincidence that this happened. My <laughs> my advisor. Who was assigned to me was 
in fact, an ex-Mormon. <laughs> and and what so are the chances? <laughs> that, I mean, it was totally orchestrated and, and planned. And so... What did he share with you? And he just gave me his... I, I, I came up to him. All right, I, I, I asked him, what happened to you? Yeah. And how did you come to realize a, a solid, sure realization and conviction that it's all false? The church is that, not that true. That the LDS church is not true. And he gave me his, his history on, on uh, Joseph Smith, mm. which a lot of things I've never heard about him. Most Mormons yeah. haven't, yeah. So, I mean, his polygamous wives, I mean, even though they're, it's throughout all the history, they don't teach it. Yeah. And, um, but most importantly, what, what I had to come to realize is that this is not corrupted. This is not corrupted. The, the Bible. Yes, yeah. it is. He even says that he will not let his word uh, pass away. Uh, not a jot or a tittle shall pass away from the word of the law. Until things are, until all things are finished, I, th I think it's yeah. how and the gates of hell wouldn't prevail exactly. against his church, and heaven and earth would pass away, but mm -hmm. his word wouldn't. Exactly. I know. I, I didn't understand those <laughs> verses either, but I do appreciate them now. Exactly. Yeah. So you began trusting the Bible and reading yeah. it. And, yes. Um, and I guess he was a great help in being able to bridge those Mormon concepts a, with a great Christian concepts. Yes. Plus, you were able to break away from your addiction. Is that yeah. true? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it seemed, my addiction just seemed so much smaller than my religious problem at that point in my life. Wow. It just, even though it was a big, huge problem, my, my heroin addiction, you know, religion, my addiction to that, the, the emotional satisfaction that you get from it, um, it, it was something that I had struggled my whole life with. Yeah. And I've been deceived my whole life with it. Feeling like you're the one that needs to do it. And yeah. now when you turned your life over to Christ, and was that part of that freeing up and the burden lifting off your shoulder? What, how did you turn your life over to Christ? Well, when I, I mean, it's a kind of a long story, but it, it, it culminated down to one class that my that my uh, advisor had, had been prompted to uh, to start it was basically to teach everyone about Mormonism oh and he showed some some videos uh, the Bible versus the Book of Mormon the Bible versus Joseph Smith and after all I've been told from from the Christian community about my church um, it all it all came to that one point after the end of that movie I just broke down wow I felt so so bad for my family that they had both deceived you and have been were deceived well it's not their fault that's all they've known and yeah. I don't and I'm treated with such contempt and no one wants to hear anything I have to say by your family about the church, about my, my family, about the church. Yeah. I can't say anything. Um, Is it that so. they just are afraid to learn? I'm, I have the same problem yeah. with some of my family. I, I can relate to them because I've, I've been there and I've come out of it. Yeah. And I, I, I can say that, yes, I do understand why. Yeah. I'm not for sure because I'm not them, but yeah. I think it's fear. Yeah. I think it's facing the facts about the Bible, about Pearl of Great Price, the Book of Mormon, all of this scripture that is just so confusing together. Yeah. But just the simple truth about the gospel is, but is almost, right here. It's in one book. It so. almost seemed like the being broken allowed you to, to receive His Word. Oh, yeah. And to be receptive where when you're proud and you're on the right track, you don't have that need maybe to, you don't feel broken, you don't feel like you need to confess to God that I'm a sinner and I mm -hmm. can't do it myself. I, I think that's one of the real problems with this pride issue is that we don't ever feel 
like we need to make any changes. Uh, we're mm -hmm. doing it all ourselves. We're doing just fine. Thank you. And and we don't need that. Uh, well, I'm, well, you've you've experienced so much <laughs> in your young life. So tell us a, a little more about your Christian walk and how what the, your your feelings about Jesus now compared to before. Well, I don't have to worry about being worthy to to be with with God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, one God. I I really don't have to work at anything, which plays to my pride anyway. Right. And <laughs> Um, but you trust I, in his I, gift. I trust in his say. gift. It's yeah. and you know Ephesians two eight nine. Um, For it is by grace you have been saved, and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, so yeah. that no man can boast. Yeah. And I mean, reading through this, I'm like seeing where leaders in the earliest church are tripping up. I mean, Joseph Smith boasted about. He was better at leading Christ, even Christ. Of leading the other. Of leading that the, church, yeah, the, her the church. church he started. Yeah. So it just, it just all fell on my lap like a ton of bricks. And it was so hard to, to grasp all at one time, but it, it's, it, it sifted through and I sorted it out. And it just, Christ uh, came out. Yeah, now, only him. And now, so, people might say in the church that you were unable to keep the commandments. As I kind of introduce the each mm -hmm. program, that some people can't keep the commandments, and so they feel guilty. And yeah. but then people would blame you for that, of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I think sometimes it's the system because now you have this trust in God, you have this freedom in Christ, and yet so now you're actually more free to do. Mm evil things, I suppose, if, uh, I mean, not that you are free to do that, but, <laughs> but you don't want to. Well, you no. You have this relationship with Christ. And, and, and when I mess up, I know I'm not condemned. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, uh, oh, that's a, that's a different <laughs> scripture. You're, there is no condemnation yeah. for those who are in Christ. Well, and Christ paid and, for all our <laughs> sins, past, present, and future. We just, he, he that believeth hath, hath everlasting life. Exactly. So, well, that's great. Yeah. And so you've, you have this burden off your shoulders. And I guess the Bible means more to you, as you've explained. The Bible. Oh, yeah. Had you read the Bible much before as a Latter-day Saint? Did it mean much to you? Um, only what, what um, let's see, when they would read the Book of Mormon or, or the other scriptures, to prove its validity, they would always go to the Bible. And pull out some scripture. That's the only that... time I'd ever read the Bible. Mm. And to, you know, to qualify that, those scriptures. Yeah. And that scripture would always inform the Bible. So it was just, I mean, it's a clever story if you don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> it, it, it gets found out. Well, you said something that I thought was interesting while we were talking before. And it was, you said as a Christian, it may be more difficult, but it's not more complicated. No, it's not complicated. Not complicated. Ex explain at all. that just a little bit, or repeat that for us. Well, it is more difficult because you're making your own choices. Exactly. And, yeah. But uh, but you're not promised peace in this life, like like Latter Day Saints tell you, um, by being a, a, a disciple. You're you're going to be on the uh, the receiving end of a lot of mocking and. Family, not and, listening. And family, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're mocking me, but, no. I mean, he said that uh, he came to bring a sword um, and to cause a man, how exactly, <laughs> do, you, do you remember that scripture? Well, I, 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 I know he up. brings a sword into divisions between yeah. brother and sister he, he, and it, father, the, mother. And the so. gospel in its simplicity creates division. Yeah. And uh, the peace I have is in Christ. It's knowing that I don't have to worry about those things that are very temporary and my, yeah. I find my rest in Him. Yeah. And, but I'm not guaranteed any kind of peace with my family or with my friends, so it's definitely harder. Yeah. And I know in, in the Latter-day Saint religion, you are, it's, there's a lot of support. Yeah. There's a lot of happiness. It, you're, you're part of something bigger than yourself, and to leave that is leads people, some people, to suicide. 
mm. you know? Yeah, they, they, they're challenged and guilty. And, and so it's so, supremely difficult. So tell us a little bit about uh, visiting churches and you've attended churches and well, yeah. what kind of messages do you hear there? Well, it's in church, I, unlike in the Latter-day Saint sac sacrament meeting, it's always about Christ. I always hear about Christ. Yeah. And not about, you know, how we can be more self-reliant. Uh, yeah. Or, I mean, it's self. Or, or self. praise to the man. Praise or, to the man, yeah. yes. And so, it's, I hear a lot about the mercy and the grace and, and there's no condemnation for you and there, his, his arms are always open to you and he's there for you always. Um, he's there through you. He's always, his spirit's always with you. Yes. Like, like they, they, they don't say that it's always with you. It's or the Latter-day Saints. They say it will leave you if you sin. But he came and died for us while we were still sinners. Yeah, that's a unique concept, isn't it? Yeah, and so... And, and in the church, it's all, in the LDS church, it's almost like, well, just repent of your sins, you know, and, mm -hmm. and yet we always sin. So, yeah. we're, I mean, I guess the idea is then that we're always repenting. But it's a great burden, and you've, I mean, you've certainly endured many things, and, and grateful, I'm sure you've seen God's hand in your life to have this counselor who is a former Mormon be able to instruct you and, and guide you along. And I guess you've communicated with him since, and he knows your, well, before you left, you probably yeah. had a Christian mm -hmm. walk and, mm -hmm. and had felt you turned your life over to Christ. And Well, I hope your, the rest of your life goes a little <laughs> smoother than some of your experiences in the past. Oh. I wish your mom the best still, and I know that's probably well, something you never forget. The tragedy and all, but uh, I would ask you and everyone here and the viewers to please pray for her. She mm -hmm. suffers every single day. Yeah. Um, from lead poisoning, it won't leave her body. Oh. And so I pray for healing. Well, let's but be sure to pray for her. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Well, Parker, thank you so much for sharing. I know this You're is welcome. difficult, and you know, especially to admit that you, you in a in an LDS sense, were weak so to speak, that mm -hmm. you, you fell short, which we all do. And I think that's where the pride problem of, of all of us that are so judgmental, because we look at others and, well, they're not, they're not so good, but I'm wearing my white shirt and tie, and I'm pretty good. <laughs> you know, I've got things all together, and I don't think God's a respecter of persons. I'm sure you'd agree with that. I agree with that, yeah. most definitely. Well, we appreciate you watching The X-Files tonight. If you'd like to share your story, come to The X-Files. It's X-Files xmormonfiles.tv. We'd love to hear from you. So we'll see you next week.